a lie. That their days were not like our days, the different people who lived in sepia. More buttoned, colder, with slower wheels. Shut in, sunk back in the unwakeable house for all we call and knock. And even the man with the box and the flaming torch who made his servants stand so still their faces itched. Can't offer us what it cost to watch the foreyard being lost to cream and shadow. The pierced sky placed in a frame. Irises under the windowsill were the colour of ancient Rome. I've written poetry since I was a child, really, ever since I first encountered it in primary school. And I published my first collection, there was Fire in Vancouver, when I was 24. And then I published my second collection between here and there when I was 30, and that's when I got the writer in residence position. And obviously I've been writing poetry ever since. I've just published my fifth collection, Parallax, this year. So I do have some experience of collaboration now in different media, art, um, performance, music. And I'm very keen to encourage my students to engage with other art forms as they develop their poetry um, and to, to push the boundaries a little bit of the idea of the poem as a static thing on the page. So the Land of Giants was part of the Cultural Olympiad um, that was happening all over the UK in the Olympic year last year and it was designed as an outdoor spectacle. I was contacted by Mark Murphy, who was the artistic director and writer of the script. And because it was a show which uh, was designed to celebrate the wonderful achievements of Northern Ireland in all spheres, and because one of the most famous things about Northern Ireland is the tremendous contemporary poetry tradition, he wanted poetry to be an integral part of the show. So he contacted me to write some poems but also some prose um, for key moments in the, in the spectacle. The actual performance of The Land of Giants was on the final day of June and it was a wild, wet, windy night. It was freezing cold. All the thousands of people came bundled up in coats and hats and scarves and it started with some animation which was projected onto the new signature building. And then there was a drumming performance. And as they started, the rain and the wind started to lash down and dark clouds moved in over Cave Hill and the sea was just beside us and was rough and it was all incredibly atmospheric. The poetry and prose that I read was the narrative thread through the performance. Um, so there was a poem to start and a poem to finish. And then there were 10 little biographies of imaginary Belfast people through from the 1870s right up to uh, 2012. The size of the audience was something that obviously I've never encountered before. So it was, it was a marvellous end to the, to the process of collaboration. I've done other kinds of collaborations. I've worked with a musician, for instance, and I was part of a Titian project with the National Gallery in London. In 2002, there was a commission from the Ulster Museum, and it was to celebrate the permanent art that they have, the vast collection of Irish contemporary art. So they commissioned 50 poets to write 50 poems based on 50 paintings. There was a fabulous lavery, little tiny lavery, uh, exquisite portrait of his daughter on her first communion. And I just loved that little painting. So I wrote a poem about that which was in the book and then that became central to the ideas in my second collection between here and there. Belfast Laureateship, which has happened for the first time this year, is a, a mayoral appointment. Um, and it will run for the tenure of the current Lord Mayor. Um, so I was announced as Poet Laureate in August 2013 and the biggest aspect of the position is engagement with the community um, and engaging people who do not normally engage with poetry. 
but I hope to enthuse and inspire people who do not normally read poetry or write poetry to do both of those things and to feel that that becomes um, a more open medium for them.